Perry Mason, brought to you by Tide. T-I-D-E, Tide. Procter and Gamble's new wash day miracle. Harry Mason, the famous character created by Earl Stanley Gardner, dramatized by Irving Bendig. Harry Mason, defender of human rights, champion of all those who seek justice. new soaps. I know it. And some absolutely sensational new sudsing products. I know that too, Bob. But I also know that Tide gets clothes cleaner than all of them. Yes, and I know it too, Franny. Tide gets clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other washing product known. That's because Procter & Gamble's Tide not only leaves clothes free from dirt, it removes dingy soap film too. Yet, with all this extraordinary cleaning power, Tide is safe, truly safe for all your washable colors. What's more, Tide actually brightens soap-dulled colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets sheets, pillowcases, and towels whiter than any other washing product known. Keeps them white, too, week after week. Never turns them yellow. And all this goes for your whole family wash, too. So when you choose a washing product, remember this. No soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Procter & Gamble's Tide. Tide is dirt of T-I-D-E, Tide. We're back in Judge Newman's courtroom. Outside, the early winter twilight is set. At the defense table, a man and a woman sit close, their heads together. Martha and Donald Smith, accused of the murder of Wilfred Palmer. Paying no attention to the spectators who watch them so hungrily, Donald puts his arm around his wife, whispers, Darling, Donald, don't act so trapped. Look how I feel, darling. Don't. I feel so strangely. I can hardly breathe. But you must. I can't stand much more of this. Those eyes boring into my back, those voices, those awful Martha. people. Of course, almost over. Day, you'll be fine after another night's sleep. I'll never sleep again. I never want to sleep again. Or if I do, I hope I never wake up. Oh, no, I don't mean that. I know. I want to wake. I want to live. I want to be with you. You will be. You will be, darling. Just just leave it to Mr. Mason. I will, but... And after this is all over, we'll have our honeymoon. A real honeymoon. Think so, Donald? Do you really think so? Of course I do. Now, give me a kiss. Here? Right here. In front of Judge Newman, Prosecutor Noble, and everybody. And at the other end of the defense table, we hear... 405, Chief. What, Bella? It's after four. Yeah. Think Noble will be able to wind up his prosecution this afternoon? Well, he said he would. I guess he will, too, if he gets track in him. Oh. That Donald is being a good boy, isn't he, Donald? Mm-hmm. Look at him. The other end of the table with Martha, then. Oh, they're sweet. Yes. You don't deserve this. It's almost time for the mystery witness, isn't it? Yes, I imagine. After Trag, after Noble introduces Martha's glove. Then, now he wheels up the big guns? Yes, now he wheels up the big guns. Yes, Lieutenant Trag, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Noble. Let's proceed. I'll take over with Trag, Bella. See what they can do to spike those big guns. Take the stand, Lieutenant. Yes. You've already been sworn. Yes, sir. Now, Lieutenant, I show you this object. Will you tell us what it is and if you've ever seen it before? It's a woman's glove. And? The first time I saw it, it was handed to me by Detective Levinsky. You have a sworn statement by Detective Levinsky? Right here. Please tell the court about it. The glove was found by Levinsky on the service stairs during our investigation on the night of the murder. Where, Lieutenant? On the service stairs, right off the landing where Palmer's apartment was. And this is the same glove? I put a tag on it. Levinsky signed the tag here. I signed it blown here. Late in time, it was found. I see. Now, Lieutenant, there's a stain on the glove. 
That's right. You had the stain analyzed? I did. And what made the stain? Blood. Human blood. Oh, but I explained that. I explained that. I cut my finger. Chris, Chris, sit down. Sit down. Oh, don't you see what that? Oh. Go on, Mr. Noble. You have a statement from a laboratory chemist, Lieutenant Tragg. I mean, to the effect that the stain is human blood? I do. So this blood-stained glove was found on the stairway leading to the floor on which Palmer's apartment was located. Well, yes, of course, but... You tried to find the owner of the glove? Yes. Were you successful? <laughs> yes. Will you tell the court how you did ascertain ownership of the glove? Just a moment. Your Honor, we admit ownership of this glove. I object to further testimony on that point on the grounds that such testimony is immaterial and irrelevant. Sustained. Uh, well, Trag, you determined who owned the glove. Yes. Then what did you do? Started looking for Martha Smith. We found her registered in a small hotel. Under what circumstances, Trag? She was with her husband, her lawyer, Perry Mason, and his secretary, the street. And what were they about to do? Objection. How would Lieutenant Tragg know what we were about to do? The same. What were these people doing when you found them, Lieutenant? Talking. The door was open. Go on. Miss Street and Mrs. Smith had traded coats. Traded coats? Miss Street had on Martha's coat, a tan one, and Mrs. Smith was wearing Miss Street's, a blue one. But they weren't trying to get away or anything. That's enough. Your witness, Mr. Mason. Thank you. Now, Lieutenant Tragg. Yes, sir. You say Mrs. Smith's glove was found on the stairs leading to the floor of Palmer's apartment? Well, that's true, but... Isn't it a fact that those stairs connect with all floors of the building? They sure do. So it's impossible to say where whoever dropped that glove had been or was going. That's right, Mr. Mason. Now to get on, Lieutenant. You have a report from the chemist who analyzed the stain on that glove? It was blood, human blood, Mr. Mason. Was the blood typed? Why, no. The chemist didn't determine the blood type? He couldn't. But he did manage to make out it was human blood. That's right. But since it couldn't be typed, there's no way of telling whose blood it was. Am I right? Absolutely. It could have been anyone's. Now, Lieutenant Tragg, you say Martha Smith disappeared after the murder. That's right. Uh, We couldn't find her for a couple of days. Now, let me ask you this. Was there a warrant issued for her arrest when she disappeared? Why, no. Did the newspapers know you were looking for Martha Smith and publish that fact? They did not. Then, as a matter of fact, there was no way in which Martha Smith could have learned the authorities were looking for her. No. Further, as far as you know, her disappearance might well have been natural and legal. Yes. And when you found her, with her husband, Miss Street, and myself. Did she make any attempt to escape? Uh, she traded coats. Ah, yes. She traded coats. And you thought that significant? I did. Especially since Mrs. Smith's coat was tan. Well, we got reports there was a woman in a tan coat outside Palmer's apartment. Uh, the important tan coat? Yes. The one you searched for so thoroughly in Palmer's building. You did search for the tan coat, didn't you? Well... No. So, you found this girl who had no way of knowing you were searching for her. You found her in the company of her husband and her lawyer. And because she was not wearing a tan coat, you arrested her? Uh, uh, look here, Mason. I had the glove. And that, that coat. Oh, then you'd have arrested her anyway, with or without the tan coat. Well, sure. Then the tan coat can't be so important. But it is. I mean... Just because she wasn't wearing it, I... Uh, oh, I wish I'd never heard of a tan coat. I can see why. That's all, Lieutenant Track. Next witness, please. <coughs> well, that's that, baggage. Now we get down to it. Miss Helen Whitlock, take the stand, please. Helen Whitlock? Yes, I heard. What interest could Alan Whitlock have in a case like this? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Now, where do you live, Miss Whitlock? 363 Lincoln. The building in which the uh, murder was committed. Oh, yes. Yes, I think you were in the deceased's apartment when the police arrived. I was. I was startled by a scream. I went to 
help Mrs. Power. She's the building manager. Now, try and put that terrible scene from your mind, Miss Whitlock. I'll try. And tell us, did you know the murdered man? Well, not really. But you'd seen him. Well, we lived on the same floor. I understand. Now, I ask you, Miss Whitlock, I ask you if you know the defendant, Martha Smith. Well, I don't know her. But you've seen her before. Yes. Please, please speak up, Miss Whitlock. No matter how painful it may be, I shall have to ask you where you saw her before. I... Well, the last time, in a police lineup. <laughs> I see. You identified her in a police lineup, Miss Whitlock. I did. And how could you identify her, Miss Whitlock? Had you seen her previously? I had. Miss Whitlock, I ask you, where did you see Martha Smith before? I. Speak up, Miss Whitlock. All right, I'll tell you. I saw her coming out of Wilfred Palmer's apartment about two minutes after he was murdered. That's where I saw her. That's where I saw her. It's a lie! It's a lie! It's a lie! It's a lie! Identification that puts Martha right on the scene immediately after the murder was committed. But, Perry Mason, if you go after Alan Whitlock too hard, if you begin to shake her story, you yourself, Perry, are going to be in jeopardy, as we shall learn. Join us Monday, friends, won't you? <laughs> so many really good washing products being used, a woman has to be given a mighty good reason before she'll switch to a new one. Well, we think we can give you the best reason in the world for changing to Tide. Listen, Procter & Gamble's Tide will get your clothes cleaner than any soap, any other suds, any other washing product known. Tide leaves clothes free from dirt and more. Tide removes dingy soap film, too. Yet, with all this amazing cleaning power... Tide is truly safe for all your washable colors. In fact, Tide actually brightens soap dull colors. And in hardest water, Tide gets white things whiter than any other washing product known. So try Tide. Watch those suds billow up. Notice how different they look and feel. And see your family wash at its cleanest best. No soap, no other suds, no other washing product known will get your clothes as clean as Tide. <coughs> Tide gets closer than all of them. Mason, the famous character created by Earl Stanley Gardner, is brought to you by Tide, Procter and Gamble's amazing new discovery for your whole family wash. Try Tide yourself. And you, too, will agree you've never used anything like it. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>